Okay, we are live, everyone. Welcome to the Coaching to Flourish podcast. I am your host, Raj Anderson, Executive Life Coach and Coach Assessor. And I'm a bit larger on screen than normal, but we are here. And I am here with the founder of Coach Training EDU, John Andrew Williams, and special guest, Heather Davis. Heather, I'll hand over to you to introduce who you are. Yeah, I'm Heather, and I graduated Coach Training EDU in December of this past year, so in 2023. I don't know why that feels so long ago, um, but I am a certified life coach and also a wellness coach in training, and I'm also an executive assistant on the side, and I support two incredible executives uh, in the nonprofit industry, so love getting to be a thought partner with them. And um, on a personal note, I'm from Alabama, but just spent three years in Austin, Texas. And then I've been in Bangor, Maine for about six months. So it's quite nice here. It's 75 in June, which is insane. So yeah. Well, welcome Heather and congratulations on completing your coaching certifications and we just will be looking forward to hearing more from you. I'm, I'm going to hand it over to John then. I'm sure we have a demo lined up for us. I do. I do. I got it queued up. And uh, yeah, it's good. Uh, and just really psyched. You know, I, I remember I remember the session. I don't want to give it too much preamble. I know that we just, I think the best thing to do is just dive in, see what happens. Uh, and we have uh, had the, so we have this week and next week, right? So we have two weeks to get through. Uh, usually we get through about 30 seconds of video recording in about three 30 minutes. So uh, we'll see if we can make that average go a little bit. And I know in this one, I have, a, I mean, right from the beginning, I, this recording is, uh, we just jump in like, what, what do you want to do with this session? So it goes pretty quick. Let me share my screen. Okay, there we go. And we're going to start. What What would you like to look at today? Yeah, so I've been thinking about this, thinking about what I would love to explore. And I think what I would like to dive into is figuring out how to balance, like doing what's best for myself while also um, supporting others in my life. Uh, I feel like I have a lot of dreams and passions that I'm working towards, but also see opportunities where I can step in and support others who are working on their dreams and passions um, and trying to make sure that like I'm balanced in that. Like I'm not only focused on myself, but I'm also uh, like lending a helping hand and being a friend and a support to others, um, if that makes sense. It does, yeah. I see you. Um just have to get it out of the way. Why why are they mutually exclusive? <laughs> well, I don't think they are. <laughs> what do you think, Heather? Right from the get go. I thought it was great. I thought it was a really great question. And I think I say that in the video. And I get it, I need a second to like process what you said, but it was really good. <laughs> yeah, my concern my resting coach face is not the best. Like kind of like I'm puzzling it out in my head. But uh, I don't know. I always find that interesting. I like that question a lot. We'll see how you see where it goes. I don't think they are. <laughs> What's the overlap then? Yeah. I feel the tension of I think sometimes my I'm like I'm limited as a human. Like I don't have all the time in the world. I don't have all the focus or the energy, and I have to be careful about what I commit to or say yes to um and also like know that my the dreams or the visions that i have for my life and for myself are just as important to invest in and focus on as helping and serving others and their vision and their dream or whatever it is they're building um that i've been invited into so i tend to be in throughout my whole life a yes person so like i'm always taking advantage of opportunities i've always been for the most of part of, for the most of my life i've been in a position to support others i'm an executive assistant too so like that is like in my dna like i'm a helper i'm there to support visionaries and leaders and make their dreams a reality but i have one too that i'm working towards and i want to make sure that i don't sacrifice that um by just focusing 
on those around me. But I also don't want to get to the point where I'm like only focused on my little thing that I'm not showing up for others. Is that so curious, Heather? What's it like to listen to yourself, like as a as a, a client, like but you know, like listening to yourself, uh, clienting. Uh, it's actually pretty emotional because um, I remember coming into what we're doing right now. I remember this session, and even since we had this demo, I've had a couple realizations about myself, um, or even just like reminders that I think I've been a people pleaser, you know, my whole life. And that's, that can be a really good thing in some ways, uh, but it can also hold me back in a lot of ways too. And so I see myself just wrestling with um, exactly what I'm saying. Uh, so it's, I don't know, it's a little emotional to watch back and like my heart, I feel for <laughs> myself navigating through the tension in that moment. Mm -hmm. You're now the future self, aren't you? Watching your past self. Yeah. And um, I'm trying not to ask you a coaching question, right? Oh, no, now. it feels like it's in space, right? It's like, it's just floating there. It's not even like a little floaty there. It's like a huge, a huge floaty there. Yeah, go for it. Just, it's in this. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you know, John, that I'm curious about the emotion as well. Me too. It's like, it's just right there. How can you not, right? So what, what is this emotion teaching you right now? Mm. Yeah, I'm also trying to like identify the emotion. Huh. It's like maybe empathy, empathy toward myself, um, which is interesting because I tend to usually be pretty hard on myself. The standards I have for myself are usually much higher than the ones I hold for those around me. But in this moment, just hearing myself talk, I feel empathy. Um, and now knowing a few months later, um, just having had time to reflect and work through some of that, I know that I have a pattern also the last couple of years of my life of hitting burnout where I take on way too much um, because again, I'm that yes person and I love being a part of really exciting things and I just want to do everything for everyone and for myself and my family and then um, just hitting burnout um, and then having to like completely retreat in order to recover. And that's a pattern that I'm actually currently working on Um getting rid of in my life, you know, or learning how to work through that. So. We have the coaching of this. I mean, it's like, we're just at the very, very beginning. Let's see how it goes. We're only two minutes. I think we're two and a half minutes in. This is excellent clienting though. Like it's real, it's tangible. It's immediately like in the space. Like, I feel like it's, it's, yeah. It's all the things just right there really quick. Uh, all right, let's keep it rolling. Right around. So what's the, where do you feel the tension the most in terms of time? Mm. The good question. Um, hmm. I think I feel tension um, in terms of time when it's, I'm thinking through like, okay, what could I focus on this week? Or like, I'm looking at my to-do list or my task list for the week. And I'm like, okay, I could devote this time here or I could devote it here. And which one am I going to choose? Um, and like I said, my time is so limited. I'm also like a wife and a mother. So there's a whole lot going on. I support, uh, like as an executive assistant, I still have clients that I support. So I often feel that there's so much opportunity and there's so much I could do. I just have to be, I feel the tension of like having to be so careful about where I put my time. Um, and then what I'm saying yes to and how I'm showing up for others while also, you know, my side project is coaching. And so I'm like desperate to get that off the ground. I'm so excited. And that's one of the things that it's like, I do want to focus on that, making sure I have time to put into that um, dream and vision. So, yeah. Right, cool. How do you know you're doing it well? 
how do I know? Well, do yeah, how do you know? How do you know you're doing time allocation really well? well that's a great question. Um, well, I mean, I feel like I gauge my success in this area by like what I'm accomplishing each week. And even if I see a little bit of forward motion with something that I'm working on, it doesn't even have to be massive. At least oh, if, if I can see like some forward motion and all the things that I'm balancing, then I feel like, okay, I'm doing this well. And um, I'm also like really trying to practice so I am like a spiritual person. So I like to practice the Sabbath, which is a day of intentional rest every week um, where I don't do any work at all. And I'm just like enjoying time with family and friends and doing the things I love that nourish me or feed my inner being. Um, I feel like too, if I can really <clears throat> honor and protect that day, that's a measure of success for me as well. Um, because I think I've also noticed in myself, it's almost like an addiction of accomplishment. Like, I just got to keep going. I want to do more. Um, and sometimes I'll put put so much on myself or agree to so much. Or at least I have in the past that I end up getting really burnt out. And um, and then it's just, uh, and then I'm not as fruitful or as effective as I wanted to be because I I invested or committed to too much. And I think I have a hard time, like, accepting my limitations. Um, yeah. And just wanting to do so much more than what the day or my body or my mind <laughs> allows me to do. And of course. What would be the measure, measure of success for us to look at in the next, in this session? Mm, yeah. Sorry about that question in advance. Um, but I was thinking perhaps having, I don't know, like a filter or a checks and balance in place to like make sure I'm moving my own thing along while also still being able to lean in and help a few other people in my life that I really believe in what they're doing and they've invited me into it to contribute. And I really want to do that. And I just want to, balance everything really well um not sacrifice one for the other and how can i ensure that i continue to do that in a way that like enables me to show up for them in a really great way but also stay true to myself and keep this vision and dream going with my coaching practice okay maybe that was too long so is it more like a plan, a perspective? Uh, yeah. What is, what's the thing that you feel like you're really, truly yearning for? Good question. Um, I think I'm truly yearning for Maybe the, and this might be, this is like totally different, I feel like, or maybe it's not. Yeah, 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 yeah go. <laughs> yes. It just seems to me, it's like the only thing I can think of. Um, maybe like freedom from the guilt of not being able to like do it all. Yeah. Like I mentioned earlier, I maybe I feel like I have a hard time facing my limitations, but like the freedom from guilt surrounding like, I'm not moving this forward fast enough or I can't do as much over here and I have to be really careful about what I commit to. And like, I know those are good things that I should be able to do, but I always feel this like low grade, I don't know, guilt of not being able to do all of those things all at once. Like, yeah. Heather, what are your thoughts watching this? <laughs> Uh, my thoughts are, wow, I can be really repetitive sometimes. Um, and then I do love, though, how you helped me at the end there by asking that additional question, like clarifying what it is I was really yearning for, because I think it was so much deeper than, oh, just like a checks and balance system um, or a filter in place to think through things. I think it was so much deeper. Um, and you really did an excellent job at drawing that out of me, just that sense of because I know exactly what I'm talking about. I still fight it here and there. Just the guilt of maybe sometimes having to say no or 
dialing back on some things. Um, yeah, so I definitely feel that. Mm-hmm. Great thoughts, Marge. I just want to acknowledge you, John, for it. It may seem like to listeners, where's the time model? But there it was with the measure question that John brought in. And then you going deeper with that measure question. I love the way you added the language around yearning, because I think that helped to kind of unlock Heather in that moment to talk about that guilt as well. I mean, that was what, seven minutes, 40 or something like that. um, When we're getting into what all of this is really, really about. Like you, you know, and, and I was he- hearing these other things around um, your values. You know, there there is maybe this conflict around values. You have these standards, you have integrity. There is humility showing up here. And even when John asked the question in what would doing time well look like, you know, that time allocation question, that was helping me connect with your values. So um, I could just feel your intuition there in those questions, John. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with this one so far. Um, you know, I feel like there's a certain thing. I mean, it's fascinating. You, you talked uh, a little bit about spirituality and, and the idea of like, you know, saying no or yes. Like, what does that look like? What does that not look like? I've been leaning into this idea again, uh, especially lately, of uh, God, spirit, divine energy. Um, really moving through us and we're, we are like allowing, like, you know, like we're, we're allowing so much, right. And it's our, it's our own self that, that um, is more of the bottleneck. It's not like the, the flow of energy is there. It's just like, we ourselves are the bottleneck for the flow. And it's, I'm, I'm just, it's just coming up so much here. In the sense of, you know, you know, the ideas of around, okay, so why, like, why do you feel you have to say yes? Where, where does that yes come from? You know, is it coming from the divine flow? Is it coming from sense of self? Is it, you know, uh, is it coming from, oh, if I don't, then God won't like, you know what I mean? It just feels like there's a, like the depth here, I feel like is so vast and we're just we're getting fairly deep in a coaching session. It's like this as a coaching session goes, I feel like this is getting this is getting to the deep stuff relatively quick. And yet, I feel like there's still a vast ocean underneath it that's mm-hmm. just right there, you know. Um, and yeah, we're we seven minutes in, and then twenty minutes into <laughs> twenty minutes into this conversation. And Heather, I just have to applaud your vulnerability on this too. And like, here you are, like, like this is big stuff you're wrestling with as well uh, in this space. Um, yeah, I, I think to me that this is a this is a recording that I think I would send to the ICF and MCC level. Like so far, like I think we're getting where we need to go um, in in the brief time that we're here. Uh, I don't see any missed opportunities yet, um, and yeah, I think we're also creating chances too. All right, ready for more? See where we go from here. Go. A hundred percent. If that makes sense. For sure. I'm also an Enneagram three, and I don't know if that helps, but I'm an overachiever. <laughs> three with the two. Yeah, they're like getting, you know, vibes of three and two. Oh, there is, yeah. yeah. You know, yes. that, that's that realm. No, I'm repeating it. Uh, well, let's go there. Let's yeah. go core motivation Enneagramic. Uh, you open the door. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, goody. Ready? Oh, goody. Right. Think so. <laughs> uh, yeah, right to the heart of it. Uh, the One of the core ideas of 3D and 2s uh, is uh, this idea around pride being able to give so much, but only needing so little. Mm. How does that play in your life? Mm. It's a really great question. Yeah. I mean, I definitely have seen that in my life. Um, Yeah. I definitely caught myself 
more than once in more than one season of life, really attaching my value or my identity to what it is I'm doing or accomplishing, whether it's like my career, my work, or like how I'm volunteering or the type of friend that I am, um, or even like, yeah, my workouts and running, like I'm involved with this big fitness community and everything. So I don't know. Yeah, I definitely recognize that I tend to like attach my value, my worth, my pride, a sense of confidence in myself and like what I'm producing or giving to people or accomplishing, especially if I'm accomplishing something that in some way benefits another person. Um, and I know that I've always had a hard time like telling people when I need help. You know, I actually had a professional coach one time that called that out in me. She, it's like, I told her, you know, my manager keeps asking me how they can help me and I never know what to say. And she like, why don't you know how to answer that question? And I'm like, that's actually a really good question. Why can't I tell people like if they ask me, how can I support you or how can I help you? Why is that question so hard for me to answer? And I think too, I never want to be a burden to anyone. I never want to ask for anything. Um, I think I grew up in a family that was in that position. I grew up in a very poor family, low income family. And no, I know what it feels like to feel like a charity case a little bit. And it's like, I remember I've said this in the past. I try not to say it anymore. But like, I never want to feel that way again. Or like, I never want to be in that position again. Like, I want to be the person to be helping and giving and, you know, being generous to others with my time and talent, not being in need of it. Um, yeah. Saying all of that out loud, like what, what are you realizing it's time for you to let go of? Mm. Well, it's making me really emotional. <laughs> yeah, I get it. What's the, what's the message of the emotion? Mm. Well, the emotion is... It's not really aligned with who I want to be as a person. It doesn't feel very humble. And it doesn't feel very human. It feels more robotic in that this is how I should feel or this is how I should be or this is an expectation that I've set on myself that no one else is. Um, I don't know. Yeah. It, but yeah. I, it's not necessarily who I want to be as a person. Or who do you want to be? Yeah. I teed that question up. Fuck. <laughs> Yeah. You know what I want to be. Um, yeah. It's a really good question. Um I feel like this is like the cliffhanger where we like stop it right at the you know, like before, so you have to come back for next episode and get the next week. So we'll stop it here. What do you think, Heather? This is yeah. We even well, got core motivation there, yeah. I agree with you, just just as far as like it feels so deep. Um, and it feels like we were just like going deeper so quickly. Um, again, I still get just, it, there's something emotional about watching yourself back uh, when you're being like so vulnerable. Um, and I don't know. I also know the power that this session had in my life and I won't like talk to that yet. I'll wait maybe till next week, but, and just like some of the things that were able to change after our session, but yeah. And it was funny because I was like, I had the thoughts. I was sitting here listening and I was like, I bet I go here. And then I did. So that was funny. Just remember. Me too. I was like, you know what? I, this is so Enneagramic, you know, core motivation. And then you brought it up. You're the one who brought the three and two. And I was, I was thinking, oh, this is so there. Like this is, and then I went there. It was, that was nice. Like it, I mean, seriously, clienting. You're, you as a client are providing the openings to go deeper and making it so easy on a coach to go, okay, here it is, go deeper. Okay, here it is, go deeper. Like it, you just, it's almost like you're just allowing, you know, it's just this easy, easy tumble down the hill. Um, mm -hmm. Not even hard, you know. 
Yeah, this is, I feel like this is an example of really good client team. Um, someone who's a, almost like a trained client, which I think is a thing. You know, like if you work with coaches a lot, if you are a coaching program, like you know how to get the most out of coaching sessions. Uh, yeah, I think that's also part of the set, part of what's at play here too. Mm. Yeah, and I do believe there's a lot of power in vulnerability. I'm a huge Brene Brown fan. So, you know, just realizing that, yeah, when I'm, when I can be like my most authentic self, especially in a safe space, like there's so much healing um, that can come from that. Finish it out, Raj. Yeah, I'm just honored to be listening to this. You know, thank you, Heather. Just listening to even what you just said there, that's just who you are at the core, generous and giving and authentic, even in this space right now as you're listening. So, I'm getting a lot from spending time with you and listening to John coach you in this session. So I'm honored. I want to thank you for that. Um, and I can't wait to listen after the cliffhanger next week. All right. <laughs> Welcome, everyone, to the Coaching to Flourish podcast. I am your host, Raj Anderson, executive life coach and coach assessor. I'm going to hand over to John because I know he's going to want to get into this one. Yeah, we should just play the recording. I feel like we should just jump in and play it because we ne we always run out of time. So we might want to start more towards the end. Uh, and I know that we left at a cliffhanger uh, and my computer unfortunately did not save the minute mark that that cliffhanger was uh, due to software updates and all those fun things that have been happening seems like the last two weeks. Uh, so I, I think I have an idea. I'm going to play it and then we'll just go from there. But I want to skip to the end as quick as possible. I know, Heather, you said this, imp this had an impact on your life. I want to make sure we have time to get to that before anything else as well, too. So, okay, here we go. Me, she, it's like I am, um, here it is. or even like, yeah, my workouts and running, like I'm involved with this big fitness community and everything. So I don't know. Yeah, I've definitely recognized that I tend to like attach my value, my worth my pride, a sense of confidence in myself and like what I'm producing or giving to people or accomplishing, especially if I'm accomplishing something that in some way benefits another person. Um, and I know that I've always had a hard time like telling people when I need help. You know, I actually had a professional coach one time that called that out in me. She because I, I told her, you know, my manager keeps asking me how they can help me. And I never know what to say. And she's like, why don't you know how to answer that question? And I'm like, that's actually a really good question. Why can't I tell people, like, if they ask me, how can I support you? Or how can I help you? Why is that question so hard for me to answer? And I think, too, I never want to be a burden to anyone. I never want to ask for anything. Um... I think I grew up in a family that was in that position. I grew up in a very poor family, low-income family, and no, I know what it feels like to feel like a charity case a little bit. And it's like, I remember I've said this in the past. I try not to say it anymore, but like, I never want to feel that way again. Or like, I never want to be in that position again. Like, I want to be the person to be helping and giving and, you know, being generous to others with my time and talent, not being in need of it um yeah saying all of that out loud like what what are you realizing it's time for you to let go of mm. well it's making me really emotional yeah good good what's, the, what's the message we keep going right mm. well the how are you doing Raj? should we push it forward or what are you thinking yeah, let's push it forward. I do want to make a quick observation. For any of you that are watching this, that sometimes are concerned about how do you show level two listening or that you are really focused and holding space. John, at one point I was like, I had to wait for you to blink. You were listening so intently and you were so focused. So I just want to call that out for anyone that wants to see a demonstration of just being truly present and in those levels of listening. Yeah, I just led a sample training class this morning too, which is good for me because then I realized, oh, because you know, everyone in the organization, everyone in the organization is coach trained. My life partner is also coach trained. Uh, 
we have, I mean, seriously, everyone's over there coach trained. So in some of these sample training classes, people are not coach trained. I realized, wow, there really is something to level two listening. Like, you know, again, like, of course there is, but you know what I mean? It just like hits you again. But I think the thing is like, uh, it's, it's so second nature. I realized at this point, like coaches who coach for longer than a decade, especially if you, you know, you hit, you know, you hit the 3000 mark at some point. Uh, I know Roger, you're there too. I mean, it just feels like, I don't even know. It just feels so natural. And yet someone in this morning said, oh, it feels like magic. Like, how could you hear that? You know, you're like, oh, well, you can hear it because you're, you're not filtering yourself anymore. You know, there's no like, oh, I need to filter something with this. I'm just over there. So I'm listening to Heather. Heather, I'm there. Like, you know what I mean? Like I'm in this space and it's amazing even listening right now, how much I can hear again, uh, you know, listening level two. I imagine you feel the same way, you know, like listening to yourself as a client in some ways, uh, you feel that. Um, anyway, let's listen, let's get it here and then we'll, I jumped ahead 10 minutes. So for those who are in the training program, happy news, you can listen to the same, you know, this demo recording from front to finish. Well, for those of you who are not listening along in the podcast, that's lovely. Uh, join the program, get coach trained, do the world and yourself and everyone a favor. Uh, I know the coach training journey is amazing. Uh, you only get to do it once. Uh, well, I guess you can do it more than once, but you know what I mean? It's it's a lovely thing to do. Uh, we're at the twenty one minute arc right now, so let it go from here, and then that should give us time to finish this out and uh, see what, how the aftermath played out too. There's so many things that are so important to us that like we're not able to because of like just where we live, finances, all that, like com just everything. We weren't able to fully live a life that reflected those. And so we made the decision to come to Maine for slower paced lives um, and just for more time and space to work on the things that matter most to us. And it's so funny that I've moved all this way and there is a bit of like natural slowness because of where we're at, but also I can feel myself wanting to go back into you know, I gotta keep going, like, look, like piling on the work, the tasks, like running at a really fast, hard pace. And it's, I'm just realizing that it's hard for me to chill out. Um, and I think the insight that God is wanting me to have. Uh, I feel like there's a lot of insights, um, but I really think he desires for me to be free from this pressure to produce and and i'm I'm probably I'm like probably one of a million people that feel that. And that's also why I want to be a life coach because I I do love helping other people. And I think that um, not only do I want to, I know I don't have to have all my stuff together to be a coach or to be an effective coach in any way, shape or form, but the things that I would be like hoping other people would do or like coaching them toward, like, am I doing that myself? And um, yeah, so yeah, freedom from that pressure and then also just staying true to myself. Like I, I just had spent so much time shaping, like defining my values and then trying to intentionally create a lifestyle around those. And then, so I think I still need to like continue to mindfully protect those. Um, I don't know. Mm -hmm. That's a good question that you asked. I'm probably going to have to think about it for a while. What do you notice when you... Ah, all right. I was going to say, let's guess the question. What question would you ask after that? Well, no. Go ahead, Heather. What would you ask? Yeah, Heather. What would I ask? Oh, wow. Um... That is a good question. 
I'd probably ask something along the line of, um, what would happen if you took that pressure off yourself to produce? I'd be curious to hear that answer. What about you? Well, I guess we'll find out what you're. What you're. We'll find out what I do. I'll I'll do a new one. Do you want to do one, Raj? Yeah, I'm. I'm curious about this identity because I'm sensing conflict in Mm -hmm. there. Right, this this freedom, but I I want to ask, like, who are you without the pressure to produce? (laughs) (laughs) I love that one. Who are you without the pressure? Yeah, that's really nice. Oh, yes. Yeah, there's something here. I mean, this is a, and I think this is an opportunity where a lot of coaches talk about depth in a coaching relationship. Like, how do you get to that deep spot, right? And like, when you're in it, and all of a sudden you're here, it feels like there's so much here. Like, it's almost too much here. How do you handle when there's so much depth to go through? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, uh, I like that question so much. Like, who are you without the pressure? Um, I, I would go something where like, what happens when you sit and do nothing? Like, what, mm-hmm. I, I think that's probably would go. Like, what happens when you would just for ten seconds sit? What happens? That's probably where I would go. In most case, about mm-hmm. we'll see what I go through. So what I say, what do you notice about? I'll go back just a couple, like ten seconds if I can. There we go. Um, I don't know. Mm-hmm. It's a good question that you asked. I'm probably going to have to think about it for a while. Mm-hmm. What do you notice when you lean just a little more in that direction of releasing pressure, mm-hmm. the self judgment pressure? Yeah. I think whenever I think about that, like it's almost like I imagine it, I definitely feel like a weight is lifted. And I feel like it, if I can like let go of that pressure to produce or to do or accomplish, um, I could likely also find a lot of what I'm hungry for internally, which is definitely like a closer connection to God and more in like, the ability to recognize where the peace is leading me and then also just being able to, and then it goes back to like what I'm doing for myself and how I'm helping others. I think I would have more clarity when it comes to those decisions and it would be easier to, if my goal is not to like produce and then also to like just please other people, I think it would be, yeah, easier to make better decisions regarding what I'm committing to, what I'm allowing to come into my life, what I'm choosing to work on, invest in. Yeah. What's an action step or what's something that you want to? test this in the next couple of weeks mm-hmm. Ooh, yeah i think a good challenge for me would be to take time throughout the day even if it's like five minutes here and there to like make myself stop like stop working stop Like, even if I'm not working at my desk, like, I'm cleaning, I'm, like, exercising, I'm cooking. Like, I'm I'm just always looking for the next thing to do. And I think if I could just, like, make myself stop and do what I really... It it is in in the back of my head, in the bottom of my heart. I'm like, I wish I was just sitting there, like, doing something good for my spirit or my heart. Like, maybe it's reading a book or meditating or learning how to sit in silence all these things that i think about i talk about i read about but i never do at least i don't do it nearly enough for it to become like a daily practice and so Mm -hmm. 
I think it's almost like challenging that pride that you mentioned of, uh, yeah, like, I don't have to keep doing this and it's okay for me to like accept, like I mentioned earlier, like accept my limitations and know that like I can't and shouldn't be doing this um, to this extent and yeah. And that's like the only way I can get that peace that will help me that will guide me and lead me um, throughout the day. What do you want to call this perspective? Hmm. Let's see. Um. I want to say the peaceful perspective, but that sounds so boring. <laughs> uh, <laughs> or, yeah, just simple. Uh, but maybe that's it. I mean, because that's what it feels like. It just feels like. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Letting go of all the rushing, the urgency, the unnecessary urgency. Like, no one else is telling me. You need to do this by this time. Like, these are all things I put on myself. And, like, it would be really cool if I could take that pressure off. Mm -hmm. Walk into the peace. Yeah. Right, your thoughts. Like, how are you thinking? I was thinking how much I love that perspective question, and also your ability to just be playful there with her, right? And that's an, a demonstration of how you can you can show character in here. You can play with a session. So, um, once again, sometimes I get these questions and overviews. How much of myself can I bring in, or personality? So, just wanted to call that out there. You were playing with it, and. It, it was making Heather smile as she was playing with that as well. Um, I am curious, though, in terms of... I, I just want to hear what's going to happen next, actually. I know, me too. Me too. <laughs> that word boring, that's what I thought was funny. Mm. You're like, oh, it's peaceful perspective. Like, that sounds nice. Like, yeah, but it's so boring. Like, yeah. Oh, my goodness, you're still attached. Like, there's you know so what I mean? much like, there. You're still attached to the. <laughs> yeah, they're your thoughts. My thoughts. Um, no oh boy, geez. Um, there's still, like I mentioned last week, it's so emotional watching this back. But oh man, I just, it's like my, I'm screaming. I'm a perfectionist and I need so much help. Um, and yeah, I mean, since the session, I've, I've had so many more revelations just about myself and um, I'm constantly trying to get to the root of this attachment to pressure and busyness and all of that. But um, I don't know. I also just wanted to thank you for the space. Like you do such a good job with that as a coach, like the silence and the pausing to just let me process because sometimes it takes me a minute um, and that's actually pretty normal for me. Like people ask me questions and I just need like a minute to think through things. Um, and so having that in a coach, I feel like is, is such a valuable thing. And I felt like you exemplified that really well. So embracing the pause and the silence. Yeah, I like it too. Like as a coach too. Like I, I, I it's the same, you know, it's almost like, uh, whatever. I don't know where I got that metaphor of the sand and water, but it just feels like whenever a client is finished with answering, the sand just sort of settles and the water becomes clear again. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it, 
you got to let it settle, you know, when things settle, where does it land? Oh, you know, I, I like, I think what I'm going, what, what I am pushing for is a little more tangibility in the action step. Uh, but then the question is, well, how much do I go into that? Do I need to go into that? Because I feel like the, this session itself, the process that the session represents is already enough. But do I continue to push for more? I don't know. You know what I mean? That's where that's where you, if we had multiple sessions as a coach, you get a sense of how much do you really need to push or is this enough? Um, there's some clients where I can trust. Yeah, they got it. Action steps are going to happen. This is enough. Other clients it's like, nope, we got to get some actions on the calendar. Uh, but I think as a client, you're being so generous. I'm still hearing attached to the pressure perspective. And I think as a coach, if I, I didn't hear it as much. I mean, I think I still hear it a little bit. And that's, I think that's where I'm deciding right now. Like, I know we're up a time crunch. Do I keep pushing here or do I just let this be? Uh, my sense is I probably just let this be, but I might, I might have one more push in here. We'll see how many more minutes we have in this one. Look at your face, John. Your face shows that you know. Look at your face. Okay. I know. I'm, I, that's exactly what's going on in my head right now. <laughs> He's right there. You're like, now what? I can sense mm. the attachment. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> it's written all over boring. his face. That word boring got me. That's when I realized, oh my goodness, you're so attached. And this, I mean, it makes sense. I mean, our, our bodies, our whole beings are designed in this you know, in, in balance systems, you know, we have one, one part of our bodies is always asking for rest. The mm -hmm. other part of our body is always looking out for how can we do more? You know what I mean? So it, those two have to make friends and it feels like, okay, so how, how are we making friends? Uh, yeah. All right. Well, there's just out. Man, I, I feel it too. It's like, you know, this, this push didn't do this, not even just once a day, but every hour. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How is it settling for you? Yeah. I mean, I think that would be good. I actually, it. I actually just read. What was I reading? I don't know what I was reading or learning about. It was somewhere I was learning about how important breaks are. Taking breaks. Oh, it was maybe in my health coach training. But um, and so I actually have started making myself. I'm not, I haven't been sticking to it that well, but it's in my calendar. I have these like allotments for 30 minute breaks after 90 minutes to two hours of really focused work. But I think it could be even better uh, to schedule like maybe something smaller and more frequently throughout the day, just as like, because I need those reminders um, more frequently, I think. I don't know. Hmm. But yeah, I mean, because I truly do want that to be a practice, practices of my life. And a lot of the great spiritual heroes um, and people that I look up to practice that really well. They have like the fixed hour installments of meditation silence prayer throughout the day and it keeps them grounded as humans and like reminding them of like where their worth truly lies and what matters most in life and i think that it would benefit me greatly that's like a system of checks and balances for like where am i what am i focused on here like is my perspective where it's how it needs to be or like am i focused on the right thing or what state am i in mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like an hourly an hourly perspective check mm -hmm. yeah that's a really yeah, really go. good idea all right how do we do on our session agenda I think we did really, really well. I'm running down. You said hourly perspective check. All right, Heather. How'd it go? What's, I, yeah, I feel like now, like, you got this. What's happened since? 
Yeah. So I actually did set these reminders on my phone um, that would go off every hour. And it was basically, and I, I didn't have to like sit for 10 minutes. Like I wasn't going to try to be too hard on myself about what it should look like. Um, but it was like, when this goes off, I have to take, even if it's one minute, just to like check in with myself um, and remember why I'm doing what I'm doing. And honestly, like I said earlier, like chilling out. Um <laughs> I find myself I can just get so like and I'm, I'm sure this is a pretty normal thing and it's not bad like I care deeply about my work I care deeply about all the things that I do because I want to do really well in my work or like as a mother as a wife but it's just even and I said it I said the word worth in there like I can't attach my worth to any of these things in this moment. And I was actually on a walk yesterday and, uh, or the other day, I don't know. I, and I was listening to a podcast and I don't, it was about running. I'm, I love running. And I was listening to this other uh, runner talk and they were like, I'm just so scared that if I never do another race, like no one will ever love me again, or like they won't respect me or like I have to keep racing and pushing myself in order to keep getting people's approval or all that. And I was like, Oh, that sounds like me. It sounds like I, like if I never ran a long run again, or if I never achieved this pace, or if I never did this in my career, if I never made, like, do I still know that like I'm lovable and like acceptable? And it, that, that no, those things have nothing to do with what I have, what I, what's on my resume or what's on my Strava account, or my Instagram, or, you know, like, all of that, that's just not what matters. So, yeah, so those reminders uh, really helped, and uh, I did start to see quite a bit of of growth, and, and even just more awareness, like, when I'm in, because sometimes I can just go through the rush of the day without even realizing it but then like just checking in like on myself to understand be more aware of like the state that I'm in like hey are you freaked out are you freaking out right now um because your task is, is so long or are you actually like calm and at peace and like knowing that everything will work out as it should and you can do your best and that's enough um so yeah and then since then I've also just had a lot of realizations about yeah, like you said, that attachment to pressure, like that attachment to uh, or really trying to just get that um, or grow through that or identify the root cause of, yeah, a con like the ceaseless need to accomplish. Um, yeah, I don't know if all of that makes sense, but. I mean, it reminds me in a lot of I mean, just the structure and power of prayer yeah. to have the ability just to, to stop and to connect with source and to, I mean, different religions, different cultures throughout the world have different structures to keep humans in connection. Yeah. And it's, I mean, it's I mean, from a positive psychology standpoint, if you're going that direction, I mean, it's, it's called gratitude, yeah. you know, the ability to be grateful at any moment, at any time, you just you tap into gratitude and, and things happen. It's amazing when all of those things start to really line up. Yeah. And that's what feels like here. It feels like, oh my goodness, like you're wrestling with the like core motivation, personality, with spirituality, with where you have a whole life and there are things that need to happen too. And that's, yeah, I mean, it just feels to me like you're in it and it's, it's, I, th I think a session like this where you are working with a core motivation core, okay, how am I creating a, uh, how am I taking ownership of my worth in the sense of like my ownership of my perspective of my worth and connection to God and, and spirit and all of that, like, that's what I feel like is really happening at play here. Uh, and it's it's a privilege to be able to walk with you in this space. Uh, and then to share it and to say, yeah, this is how, like, this is what you, this is what's possible as a coach. You mm. can do this. Yeah. I want to acknowledge you 
Heather, for just your openness and realness and being vulnerable. And um, I, I just want to share, it reminds me, as you said, I'm sure you said right at the beginning, I'm sure lots of people, I'm sure millions of people go through this. And I actually have a book on my coffee table called Nixon, N-I-K-S-E-N, and it's the Dutch art of doing nothing. <laughs> so uh, as I was listening to you, it kind of reminded me of uh, of that, right? Because I have to walk past that and and see it. So if anyone's interested, I just wanted to share the concept of Nixon. Um, and also as I was listening to you, it reminded me of a client who had created an affirmation for themselves. Um, if it's all right for me to share that with you. Love to hear um, and the affirmation was, I deserve to be loved for who I am, not just for what I do. Mm. So as I was listening to you, is reminding myself too, who, you know, can get addicted to that productivity. And when you have your own business, John, you know that, right? <laughs> the achievement and so many things that need to happen. Um, but thank you, Heather. It was a real pleasure. And John, thank you for sharing just those beautiful moments of coaching. I love the way you close the loop even at the end. Uh, you know, you never forget to do that effortlessly, just closing the loop on the session as well. Um, as we close out today, is there anything you want to add, John? Just thank you, Heather. It's lovely to have a client willing to go uh, to this depth and to share. Uh, it really is helping other coaches uh, and other other people um, see what's possible with coaching and moving the field forward. So thank you for that. Really, truly. Thank you for the opportunity. This was so good and yeah, really enjoyed it. Very powerful. So thank you, Heather. Thank you, John. Thank you to everyone who's listening. Please, any coaches, if you want to submit a recording, doesn't matter what level it's at, John and I would love to hear it. We will be back next week with more demos. Have a wonderful rest of your week. Yeah, thanks again. Thank you.